everyone. I'm Lisa Jones from West Virginia University's Extension Service Small Farm Center, and I make videos on increasing your farm's success, whether you're just getting started, maybe selling locally at a farmer's market, or you're scaling up to increase your efficiencies for your farm business. And I'm here to guide you on your sustainable agriculture journey by putting knowledge to work. And today we will be discussing farming as a business versus agriculture as a hobby. So have you asked yourself why you want to farm? Is it for the lifestyle? Maybe you've thought about being your own boss and that's attractive, or maybe you want to live more off the grid. Is it a decision you're making based on social reasons? Or maybe you're profit motivated. Up front, let's go over some important definitions to set the stage. So the first term is homestead, also referred to as homesteading. Some people might call themselves homesteader as well. And this term is used when people are focused on living a lifestyle of self-sufficiency, typically characterized by subsistence agriculture or individuals who are solely living off the land and not generating a profit. So if this is your dream, then that is awesome and live your dream. However, if you're using this term, then by definition, you are going to fall under the category of not profit motivated and thusly not a farm based on how IRS and USDA classify farms. So the term homestead also has other defining points, such as the Homestead Act of 1862, signed by President Abraham Lincoln, which gave citizens up to 160 acres of public land, provided they live on it, improve it, and pay a small registration fee. Homesteads are about being able to support yourself and your family based on what you make on the land and are generally not focused on producing agricultural goods for sale, the focus being entirely self-reliant. Another way to look at homesteading is for property tax exemption purposes, which varies by state. In West Virginia, the Homestead Exemption Act enables residents who are 65 years of age or older or permanently and totally disabled to reduce their tax burden. These persons are entitled to an exemption from property taxes on the first $20,000 of assessed value on the owner-occupied residence. So to qualify for the exemption, you must apply for it through your assessor's office. And to learn more about this particular exemption, check out the West Virginia Code, Chapter 11 on Taxation, Article 6B on Homestead Property Tax Exemption, which I will link below. The second term to cover is hobby farming. So hobby farming differs from homesteading because hobby farmers must have another way to make an income outside of their farm entirely, whereas homesteaders focus on resilience from the land. So if you're using the term hobby, then again, you're gonna fall under the category of not profit motivated and thusly not a farm. The IRS considers a farm to be a non-deductible hobby if it doesn't produce a profit three out of five years. That means per Internal Revenue Code 183, activities not engaged in profit, you cannot claim losses from your hobby or pleasure activities as an offset against other taxable income. Now you may think, what? I used to be able to do that. Well. Due to tax changes under the Tax Cut and Jobs Act of 2017, miscellaneous itemized deductions have been suspended. Hobby expenses are no longer able to reduce hobby income. And while technically hobby farm losses have never been allowed, recent changes due to tax reform are no longer allowing hobby farmers to deduct expenses paid for what may be considered farm activities. So this could come as a shock if the IRS comes knocking at your door wondering why you continue to report thousands of dollars of farm losses when your tax return doesn't qualify you as a farmer. And if you're reporting your taxes on Form 1040 Schedule F, the farm tax return, then you must show a profit motive to de deduct farming losses. And as a taxpayer, you should not single out one particular factor to determine whether or not your farm is a business. The IRS can take up to nine different points into consideration, which can be found in the Farmer's Tax Guide. One, you operate your farm in a business-like manner. This could mean you have a business plan, you have separate checking accounts for your personal account versus your farm, you have budgets set for your farm, you retain records. These types of activities fall under operating your farm in a business-like manner. 
two, the time and effort you spend on farming indicate you intend to make it profitable. So a significant percentage of time should be devoted to your farm. If you're transitioning from a homestead to a full-time farm business, then you might already work on the farm as a full-time job. Three, you depend on income from farming for your livelihood. So if your farm is your sole income, then you should be more profit motivated. Make sure you keep financial records to show this, and I will cover this in a record keeping video at a later date. Four, your losses are due to circumstances beyond your control or normal in the phase of startup farming. So we know that farming's risky business and the weather does not always cooperate. So you may lack short-term profit due to these circumstances, but you can show an increase in value on other farm assets, meaning you have a pretty standard startup business, which can feel like a roller coaster financially for the first several years. Five, you change your method of operation in order to attempt to improve your profitability. So you can show financial success in other portions of your operation, showing that you're diversifying your income in attempts to be profitable, which in general is a great recommendation. Six, you or your advisors have knowledge needed to carry on farming activity as a successful business. So this motive looks at whether or not you have a personal background in the activity, whether education or experience, or you can point to experts like the extension service or other consultants that you rely on to increase your knowledge. An example might be keeping up with a pesticide license or other certifications for your operation. Seven, you were successful in making a profit in similar activities in the past. So you wanna show three or more years of profit out of five. Eight, you make a profit from farming in some years and the amount of profit you make, and this can be your overall financial status, so you can keep track of your net worth or check with an accountant about the overall status of your business. Nine, you can expect to make a profit in the future due to appreciation of farming assets. A business plan would be very helpful to show your future project projections. So feel free to let me know in the comments below if you want to see a video on how to make a business plan for your farm. So remember, you can no longer deduct expenses of carrying on a hobby activity for sport or recreation from a hobby because it's not profit motivated. So hopefully the lesson you've learned so far is that you really should avoid the label hobby farm in order to make sure you get tax breaks. So if your goals are only leisure and enjoyment, maybe you have a few horses, a couple livestock, some crops, then you know, you have a hobby farm and that's fine, but you cannot deduct your expenses. So the third important definition, which is what you're hopefully here for, is for a farm, sometimes referred to as a farmstead. So what's a farm? Well, it depends on who you ask. And by net definition, according to the USDA, our United States Department of Agriculture, your farm, if you sell at least $1,000 worth of product annually. And after that, you're a farm and you can be listed as a farm business and you want to be listed as a farm business for tax purposes. And you wanna make sure that your sales from your farm are accounted in record so you can take advantage of every break available to you. You pay into the system, make sure you're not paying more than your tax share. So how does IRS define a farm? Well, that's a bit different than the USDA. So page one of the Farmer Tax Guide, publication 225 states, you are in the business of farming if you cultivate, operate, or manage a farm for profit, either as an owner or a tenant. A farm includes livestock, dairy, poultry, fish, fruit, and truck farms. It also includes plantations, ranches, ranges, and orchards and groves. Wait, did I just say truck farms? Yes, I did. This is a term that is hundreds of years old and might not be common today, but it refers to exchanging commodities and the production of garden vegetables. But wait, was your type of operation not in the general definition on page one? Well, don't fret, because the 2019 Farmer's Tax Guide is 92 pages long, so it's likely that your type of operation is included and it might even have its own chapter. So by definition, if you're a farm, then you should be using a Form 1040 Schedule F, which is the profit or loss for, from farming document to report your farming activities. 
So the important difference between homesteading, hobby farming, and farming is really only that one of these definitions take advantage of reducing your tax burden. So if you like saving money, then you need to operate as a farm, which is an agricultural business, so you must show profit. But don't let the paperwork scare you from starting your farm business. The forms are worth every penny for your farm. And as a farm business, you can write off oil for your tractor, stock trailers, hay for animals, vaccinations, dewormers, your equipment in your barn, feed, labor, and even a portion of your cell phone bill in your office space. The list goes on. So remember, in an agricultural business, you can be exempt from sales tax. If you spent $10,000 last year on your farm expenses with the 6% sales tax in West Virginia, you could have saved $600 with this exemption. So I recommend getting an accountant, having a tax preparer, so you don't miss any of those exemptions. And hopefully this video will change how you think about your farm and I encourage you to seek advice from a tax professional. Again, don't let the IRS classify you as a hobby if you're farming and selling products because you could be missing out on hundreds if not thousands of dollars in tax breaks. So if you found this content useful, please give it a big thumbs up below. And if you're looking for more videos in the future about improving your farm business's efficiency and profitability, please subscribe to our content and hit that notification bell to get an update on future videos. And in the extension service, we thrive on good feedback. So drop your questions and comments below. And that way I know what kind of videos you want to see next. And until next time, happy farming. Toodles.